Welcome to Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Morris. Today we're going to be talking about eigenfunctions and eigenvalues. Their definitions really suck. I'm going to introduce you to the formal definitions in a few minutes here, but first we're just going to sort of take a look at what eigenfunctions and eigenvalues are, and it's almost easier to see what they are than to understand their definitions. So let's take a look at this function we got down here, e to 3x. And if you notice just below that, we're going to take the derivative of e to the 3x. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'll explain why this is relevant in just a second. So we take the derivative, and we're going to get e to the 3x, because whenever you take the derivative of an exponential, you get back the exponential, times the derivative of what's up here. So the derivative of 3x is 3. So you're going to get 3 times e to the x. And that's the derivative of e to the 3x. Okay, well this is actually sort of an interesting situation, because... On the left-hand side, what we have is this guy, our derivative, operating on a function. And we get back that same function. So on both sides, you see e to the 3x. And the only difference is, on the right-hand side of the equation, you get this extra 3. Well, it turns out, in this case, e to the 3x is called an eigenfunction, and that 3 is called an eigenvalue. Let's take a closer look at that. So, basically what this is saying is, take any operator is what it's called. In our case, our operator was a first derivative. And below you see it expressed in symbolic terms with an O and a little hat. So that stands for an operator, which is just something that acts on a function. So if you take an operator and you apply it to a function, and it spits back out that same exact function times some constant. If this relationship is true for any function, that function is called an eigenfunction. Basically, we're applying some operator to it, and we get back the same thing and we get it back times some constant. That constant is called the eigenvalue. All right, now we're gonna take a look at the formal definitions, then we're gonna do some examples. Get ready for some crappy formal definitions. All right, so what's an operator? An operator are instructions that act on an adjacent function. So in this case, our operator is acting on f. All right, that's an operator. That one's actually not so bad. Eigenfunction's sort of a mouthful. For a given operator, that is, you choose an operator. So an eigenfunction could be an eigenfunction with respect to one operator, but not an eigenfunction with respect to another operator. And I think this will become more clear as we continue to work through examples. So an eigenfunction is something that for a given operator, a function is called an eigenfunction if the operator returns the original function times a constant. So what that basically means is we're going to do something to a function. If we get back that function, boom, that's called an eigenfunction. If we don't get back the function, it is not an eigenfunction. All right, then what's this eigenvalue business? An eigenvalue is the constant that gets returned for an operator that's acting on an eigenfunction. If something's not an eigenfunction, there is no eigenvalue. So we only get an eigenvalue if there's an eigenfunction. And if there's an eigenfunction, you always get an eigenvalue. Let's make this more concrete by doing two examples. So here we have the question, is the function sine of 3x an eigenfunction of the operator, the second derivative with respect to x? If so, what is the eigenvalue? How do we solve this problem? How do we answer the question? How do we know if it's an eigenfunction? Well, all we're going to do is we're going to go through these steps, and we're going to, step one is just apply the operator to the function, right? And that's the left half of our equation. Remember, we have this o hat times our function. In this case, our operator is the second derivative. So for our operator, we're going to plug in the second derivative, and our function is sine of 3x. So for our function, we're going to plug in sine of 3x. Now we're just going to go ahead and apply that operator. The operator is going to act on our function. We're going to see what we get. Well, if we go ahead and take the first derivative of sine, what we're going to get is sine becomes cosine of 3x. And then again, we have to follow the chain rule, multiply by the derivative of what's in there, and that's going to be times 3. All right, let's take the next derivative. When we take the derivative of cosine, we're going to get negative sine. And it's 3x times 3. And now we have to once again apply the chain rule, and we get another factor of 3. So let's just combine that into something that looks nice. We get negative 9 up front, sine of 3x. All right, that's step one. We just applied the operator. And that's always how we're going to start. We're going to apply the operator, and we're going to see what do I get back out. Now, what we're going to want to do is look at our answer after applying the operator and see, can we find the original function? 
So that's step two. Can we find the original function? Well, I look over here and I see, oh, that's sine of 3x. That's actually my original function. That is f of x. All right. So we got yes. So that means it is an eigenfunction. So if we can find the original function there, then we know that uh, the function we're dealing with is in fact an eigenfunction for the particular operator we're looking at. So then what's the eigenvalue? Well, if this is an eigenfunction, the eigenvalue is just the constant up front. And notice here we see a constant, minus nine. So basically what we're gonna say then is yes, sine of three X is an eigenfunction with respect to the second derivative operator. What's the eigenvalue? The eigenvalue is that constant that we got up front. It's negative nine. All right, notice that sine of three X is an eigenfunction for the second derivative. But if we had stopped at the first derivative, we would have gotten this cosine of 3x. That's not the same function. So for the operator of a single derivative, sine of 3x would not be an eigenfunction. Let's take a closer look at an example where something's not an eigenfunction, giving you away the answer right at the beginning. So here we have the function x cubed. And we have the operator 3 times the first derivative. Notice that an operator can have numbers in it and variables in it in addition to derivatives. So operators can be all sorts of things. Basically, the choices are you multiply by something, either a constant or a variable, or you take a derivative with respect to some variable. So we're going to follow the same stop steps. We're going to apply the operator to our function. So we're going to do 3 times d dx, and we're going to apply that to x cubed. All right. Well, when we take the first derivative, we're going to get 3x squared. So we're going to get this 3 up front, and then the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. So what that's going to be equal to then is 9x squared. And you might say, oh, look, there's 9. That's an eigenvalue, but not so fast. We have to ask ourselves first, do we see the original function? Remember step two. Is the original function present? Well, before we had x cubed, right? But now we have x squared. x squared and x cubed are not the same function. So now we get no. The answer is no, this is not an eigenfunction. So what's the eigenvalue? There isn't one. So if it's not an eigenfunction, you're never gonna have an eigenvalue. So remember, eigenfunction is something that we can apply an operator to and get back that same exact function times some constant. If you get back some constant times that same function, then you have an eigenvalue and it is the constant that's multiplied by it. All right, so that's an introduction to what eigenfunctions and eigenvalues are. Please ask any questions you have below. As always, subscribe by clicking on the Real Chemistry icon or visit my channel to see more YouTube videos. Thanks for watching.